And it's Evan Kerstel here with uh, Christina Rodriguez, the Vice President of the Data Center Group within Intel and General Manager of the Wireless Access Network Division. That's a mouthful, but in any case, good morning, Christina. How are you? Hi, Evan. How are you? Thanks, uh, I'm well. thanks for having me. Well, nice to chat. And um, I would have liked to have this conversation in Barcelona back at the Mobile World Congress, but sadly, we are where we are. Uh, so it's nice to catch up in any case. Um, maybe you could introduce yourself to the viewers briefly before we dive right in. I'm Cristina Rodriguez. I um, am uh, with Intel in the data center group. I, uh, I am responsible for the wireless access uh, network division which is, again, everything around the uh, radio access uh, network. There's a lot of things very exciting happening in that area, uh, uh, networking side of things, but, but specifically in the, in, the radio, in, the radio access, uh, in the radio access side. So if you look at what that means is uh, the radio access is that piece of the, just for, for, for those that are less familiar with it, is that piece of the telecommunication infrastructure that connects the the well traditional would have been the uh, handsets or the or the or the um, user the, the end user devices, which now is all kind of uh, of devices and things, to the rest of the network through a radio connection. So that's that's in the most traditional way. Is uh, when you when you drive by and you see that the cell towers. There is a base station, what is called a base station there with the antennas in the top and the baseband in the bottom. That's, that's the, tra the most traditional way. But as, as I'm sure we will talk, there's a lot of uh, new exciting things happening around that. Yeah, there's so much to cover. And in fact, I started my career in the paging network infrastructure world going back almost 30 years. So at that time we were putting uh, base stations for paging mm -hmm around the country and that was a big deal. And it's kind of amazing to me that the radio architecture fundamentally on the, on the access side hasn't changed that much in, in, in 30 years, if, if you look at it from an electrical engineering and RF radio perspective. So what's the big idea in, in going to virtual and in moving from you know, black box sort of hardware elements to virtual network elements and virtualized software running radios, as we call them in the industry. What's the big idea behind that shift, which is being accelerated now with, with Intel? No, that's a, that's a very, that's a very fun question to, to answer, right? Uh, so, so to, to look at it, um, you know, the, the, the trends and all the new things uh, uh, happening and the, the new type of run deployments, uh, uh, as, as we call it, uh, we have to start looking at uh, what 5G and, and the edge, right? The, the build out of the, the edge means uh, in this space and the possibilities that this, uh, that this open up, right? When we look at the evolution of the run, we look at the broad market uh, drivers. Um, first of all, in, in, in comparison with 4G, right, the previous generation of wireless, the, the 5G build out will require a much more diverse set of solution deployments. And, and, and as I said, one side no longer fits, uh, fits all, right? And that's what all the, the multiple possibilities uh, come. Think, think about it, right? We, we are going to see with 5G, we're going to see deployments that are going to be distributed, just the, the, the traditional way, the, the, radio at the, the radio at the top of the antenna, the baseband at the, bottom, at the bottom of the cell tower. That's one type of deployment. But we will see also more centralized uh, deployments where there is functionality running or part of that uh, wireless protocol stack running in some centralized location, we'll see deployments where it's completely end-to-end -end cloud uh, uh, native uh, deployment. We'll see deployments where it's fully integrated at the, at the, at the top of the, the, uh, the, the tower. Um, so that's, that's um, we'll see also different and split. You, you're saying that the fundamental architecture hasn't changed, but there is a, there is a lot of things that, uh, that, that we can have that 
uh, that protocol is tag on wireless, is splitting in multiple ways, in different ways in the, in, in the deployment. We'll see also, for example, macro with a you know a number of uh, uh, certain capacities certain uh, coverage but we also see micro and a small sales capacities and 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 form factors different different capaci capacities and and form factors we will see for example license spe license spectrum and on license spectrum and with that, we'll see public, public networks, but also private networks. We will see a broad range of radio deployments um, going from sub six gigahertz to millimeter wave to different frequency bands, different bandwidth carriers, massive MAMO configuration. So <clears throat> all kind of, then you, you put on top of that all the different use cases that 5G can bring with the, you know, the ultra, reli ultra reliability, low latency, the, 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 the critical uh, um, mission uh, kind of uh, use cases. And <clears throat> now there is a lot of uh, <clears throat> possibilities there. So. Uh, you know there is there is a there is a both sides of uh, the, the the network of today will still have to support all that so the the, the the network that exists today will have to support new use cases and the operators will want to leverage what exists uh, what exists today but at the same time there is a there is a market thirds and a market need uh, to bring innovation that we have seen in the cloud deployments to bring it into the run and provide uh, an opportunity to increase the value of the radio access uh, of, of the radio access uh, network. And uh, we're starting to see the service providers embrace this type of transformation in the run to make it to use uh, some of the technologies such as network fusion virtualization and software defined network, bringing that into the run. We have seen for the last 10 years, we, there's been a transformation in the network, bringing that to the core of the network. And now we see that happening into, into the run. And with that, you should, using virtualization, having a virtualized uh, run deployment, we have the ability to bring common cloud software uh, platform from the core to the edge, uh, including the far edge, and uh, having faster deployment of new software and features, enablement of new service offerings, and, and even new revenue models, and just in general, taking advantage of that server economy of scale. Wow. Well, that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty phenomenal. That's pretty compelling. So let's look at this, this marketplace. I mean, we've seen a move to software in the rest of the network for quite some time, whether it's the white box phenomenon, whether it's the move to SD-WAN, which is, you, you know, move to software, defined networking, software architectures. So why did it take so long to get here? What, what, it, this seems like a logical you know, web scale kind of effort. Is it just because we're, we're, we're old and, and stodgy in the telecom market? Or, you know, is it, is it technologies that are finally coming together from, from Intel and others? Or, you know, what's, why now? It seems like this is really reaching peak uh, excitement and, you know, peak, uh, you know, interest. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good question. It's a combination of things, right? And I think number one, yes, the technology has to be there. And I think we have now uh, the, the and, and, and for sure the products that we offer and our network portfolio uh, uh, that, that Intel offers, it definitely brings the, the possibility to do these things, this, uh, this applying of the, the uh, server technologies into the radio access network. And we recently uh, uh, launched two, uh, we, we had an uh, announcement recently with uh, our part of our portfolio. And uh, we announced two, two main things there. We announced the new second generation of Intel Xeon scalable processor. And uh, we also announced our Intel Atom P5900 platform also for the uh, focus on the radio access network. And in general, we have a very rich uh, uh, portfolio, including, the, uh, including the, the processors in general, but also FPGAs and EASIC and ASIC and Ethernet devices. So, so number one, yes, the technology is there for sure now. 
Uh, there's also traditionally the radio access network. One of the most uh, challenging workloads that, that exist is, uh, and certainly in the, in the networking space, is the, is the layer one that very first uh, layer in the wireless uh, stack, right? And it's very compute intensive. So, so traditionally has been done with uh, highly optimized uh, uh, custom uh, solutions, right? And that is still is, uh, is, uh, is there and it's a very important way to deploy a radio access network. But now we can take that workload and run in into the Xeon are running on, 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 a, on our Intel Xeon products on, on server technology and uh, with uh, some dedicated acceleration in FPGAs, for example, or, or, or E ASIC even, uh, we, can, we can now run that layer one, layer one workload into a server architecture with all the, again, the additional flexibility, the additional scalability, they having the same kind of a common platform all the way through the network. So that's a tremendous advantage for, for the operators. But there's also a third thing I would say is uh, just what, what 5G means, right? And the use cases that, that uh, 5G makes possible when we're talking about the type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, mission uh, con uh, mission critical right critical uh, 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 critical workload that re or applications that require very very low latency and ultra reliability we're talking for example autonomous driving right we the, the amount that the that the that the that the data travels matters right the distance that the that the data travel matters and you can afford having all the data go through you know through the through that data center and come back so we have to bring that compute power closer to where the user is and that's all the edge right the, the need for the edge and with that now okay it makes perfect sense to have there again Intel Xeon based architecture where all these workloads and all these applications can 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 live in yeah, that's exciting. It's also of interest to the carriers who are under tremendous pressure competition-wise and, and pressure to reduce their, their CapEx and their network expense and their data center expenses. They're seeing tremendous pressure to reduce their, their CapEx, right? I, I mean, so is, is the move to uh, virtual RAN also a, a really a savings for them on one hand and an opportunity on the other in terms of these new services? Yeah, I think I think it's a combination of things, right? Number one is is the innovation that this can bring, right? In in, in my view, the, the amount of innovation that having this type of architecture in the network in, and in the radio access network is is tremendous, right? The possibilities of having multiple uh, multiple work, multiple workloads and multiple applications running in there. But of course, the, the operators will also aim to benefit in, uh, in in time to market, in capex, in opex. Of course, that's that's part of. The, they will always always want to aim to that, that that type of benefit. And you go to market with many different partners. Uh, really, it's a who's who of the industry. Um, how do you see yourself partnering? with carriers because you're not known as a company that typically sells directly but you have all kinds of developers and oems and integrators and fantastic partners who deploy solutions what what does the go-to-market look like for you and your team on the virtual RAN side so so we're here the, the way i see ourselves we're here to help our customers to be successful and and they are going to have different they're going to go to marketing with different type of with, uh, different type of deployments multiple type type of deployments as i mentioned before and we're here to support them in the in whatever makes sense for them at the time that it makes sense uh, for them right different operators are going to have different architectures and are going to have different timeline to roll to roll out uh, all those new deployments including the virtualized uh, the virtualized run look we we believe that uh, we have uh, an unmatched portfolio of solutions uh, to support uh, the range of run 
run options, and we have a, a, a very deep relationship across the industry to collaborate, innovate, and integrate on, on again on a variety of uh, architecture ingredients. Um, we work very collaboratively with both the telcos and the service providers, and we have done that over the, the you know uh, over the last ten years for sure on the network transformation journeys, and and now that this extends to the to the radio to the radio access uh, network. Well, it's super exciting and it's, it's super interesting to see so much innovation happening in the midst of so many challenges, both to, you know, working from home and distributed work. And clearly you, you guys at Intel haven't uh, missed a beat. I am interested as well in, uh, uh, in some of the other initiatives that Intel around, um, in particular, the funding and initiatives to find a, a cure for the coronavirus pandemic and to enable others to, to invest in research and development using an open source kind of uh, approach to, to finding cures. Uh, that must be very inspiring for you and your team as well to have that mission. Uh, tell me more about that initiative, yeah. if you would. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, it's hard not to, not to have any conversation these days without talking about what is, uh, what is uh, going on uh, and, uh, and 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 again, what what we're doing around uh, COVID uh, co coronavirus and and COVID uh, nineteen. Um, I'll, I'll I'll start saying when Intel's top priority in in managing the the coronavirus uh, situation is protecting the health and well-being of employees while continue to operate and support our customers around the, around the world. We are seeing that technology has never played a more important role. We look at us here in this, uh, in this uh, interview, all, everything that is happening in the, the learnings, the, 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 the medical care, um, and Intel products are at the backbone of, uh, of that modern uh, uh, digital infrastructure that, is, uh, that we are relying so much uh, right now. Uh, we are applying Intel's uh, technology and expertise, as you said, to combat uh, this pandemic. We are committed to helping communities where we operate and uh, we are uh, mobilizing resources to support uh, local, local needs. You, you probably saw um, recently we announced uh, pledging a, a 50 million in a pandemic response technology initiative. Uh, these, uh, these funds contribute to our focus on combating the, again, the coronavirus through accelerating access uh, to technology at the point of care, but also speeding scientific uh, research and, uh, and ensuring access uh, to online learning for, for the students. And uh, this is in addition to add, uh, uh, this add to our prior announcement of uh, 10 million in donations that uh, uh, are meant to support the local communities during this uh, critical uh, time. So look, it's, uh, I'm honored and, and proud of, uh, of working at, at the same time, honored and proud of uh, working on a company that has such a social responsibility and that is lending expertise, resources, and technology talents in, in, in a way to uh, to improve uh, the situation. That's so great to see. I mean, top of my mind these days are remote learning initiatives and telehealth and telemedicine initiatives, both exactly. which um, sadly are being uh, doubled down on in this time. And, you know, technologies like 5G and others are critical to enabling both of those initiatives. So Absolutely. again, keep up the great work and uh, Thank you, Evan. here's to seeing you in person, maybe uh, Mobile World Congress 2021. Let's knock on we wood. We hope so. Yes, and, uh, absolutely. And, and stay safe. Th thanks so much you for too. your time. You too, Evan. It's a pleasure.